No, my name is uh, J.M. Devo. I am a pastor and a teacher of God's Word. I pastor a church called uh, Innkeepers uh, Fellowship. And uh, so my life is uh, spent teaching God's Word, praying for people, uh, healing and uh, reigniting destinies of people. Growing up uh, in those days in the village, uh, the eastern part of this country, every evening was an evening for prayer, Bible study, singing hymn songs from, um, you know, uh, one of the hymn books that we had. And uh, my mom was very, very diligent. I gave my life to Jesus many, many times, uh, you know, from the sermons of my mother. And so I, I believe they all counted, uh, but uh, at some point, uh, when I went to high school, uh, first term uh, of uh, my Form 1 years, 1996, I of course now made some more serious decisions to pursue and establish my faith in the Lord. And so many times I did that, and uh, yeah, but uh, consciously and uh, with, with good intentions and plan, uh, 1996, as I recommitted my life to Jesus in uh, Form 1 in Dagoretti High School. All right, uh, now, Thinking Challenges Africa, I'll talk about three areas and three things, uh, or rather the, 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 yeah, the situations there that are a bit complex. Number one is a family space. I just talked about the impact that my life uh, has from the home front. And I believe one of the spaces that needs fixing in this continent is a home front. If every home can have active altars where we are dealing, God is welcome, values are being shaped, uh, instructions are being given, uh, young tender hearts are being taught how to fear the Lord, they are being affirmed, they are being given identity. They are being shaped. And many wounds and challenges and problems that hit us in those early years can be shielded and taken care of. Uh, we can begin from a positive place. Number two is um, uh, the, the, the space in the marketplace. Uh, we have a calling to meet needs. And I believe every society uh, every space uh, in the marketplace. The marketplace here, I, I'm talking about our, our spaces where we do our careers, where we do our businesses in the different spheres of human existence. And so if, if we can learn how to go and take solutions there and meet needs there and not just earn a living, realize we're actually wired to go do something somewhere. And the space God's planted me to do business and to do my career and to do my whatever it is that I do is actually a space for me to offer what God planted in my life. Third and lastly, I think it's the area of church. Um, the Bible says that God has given uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, and uh, pastors for the equipping of the saints. Uh, so that um, the, the saints can go do the works of a ministry. Church is an equipping center. And so if every church, all the doors that are open for church to happen every Sunday in the continent of Africa, uh, from Cairo to Cape Town, can open the doors of a church aware that we are called to equip saints and ask ourselves, how does equipping look like? What are effective programs that equip people? How do they look like? How, how, what time should we spend equipping people? And uh, how does an equipping session look like? And then we shape church knowing this is, a, is an equipping center so that everybody that steps into church goes back out there equipped for some work. Then I believe, again, this continent will be totally transformed. Um, I'll start with the bad and the ugly. Um, missed opportunities. Um, a lot of my life is spent in the church circles. Missed opportunities. Uh, 
of mentorship, discipleship, or building the lives of people, where people may be present in church, and uh, we, we get busy doing lots of things. Two years, five years, uh, people have been in church, uh, but we, we cannot, we don't have a story to tell. As a result of this person being in church uh, for five years and seven years and ten years and being out in the marketplace, uh, out there, this is what they have managed to do and become out there and the impact they've written as a result of their connection to church. And some of the things that I look back and sometimes missed opportunities. Good things, um, I mean, there's, there's, there's been uh, awesome moments of inspiring people, giving people hope, teaching God's word, developing materials uh, that can be used among young people, and uh, seeing stories of people who've gone out there and done some meaningful things. Uh, so inspiring hope, giving practical tips, and uh, tools that people can run with. I've, I've been involved in both parachurch organizations and uh, churches. So I've been back and forth. Um, the church that I'm planting, uh, that I'm serving in now, is my second church plant, uh, if I could say, uh, you know, from scratch. And so uh, I began ministry, uh, first served in a youth ministry, uh, just passion after young, after high school, college, and boom, excited uh, youth ministry um, that we founded with a friend of mine and served from here in the city of Nairobi. And, uh, you know, went around just reaching out to young people and trusting God that the fire that we need to have ignited in our hearts uh, can be ignited. And so that's been my journey. I'm excited. I, I, if it was my choice, I'd have settled more in parachurch. I, I kind of, uh, maybe it was out of an effort to run away from the responsibilities of day-to-day -day pastoring of a church. But, um, you know. Um, right now, God has, has asked me to stay put in, in the church as a pastor, and, and I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. It has its own challenges, but, you know, that's how we grow. And so excited about uh, serving and building programs. And so I'm kind of doing both because under the same ministry that we are running, we have an arm of a ministry that also reaches to the body of Christ. And so very excited about one foot being in the body and another foot being right at the center of a church. And so that's been my journey and um, yeah, exciting. And uh, I think God's given me a great deal of learning from all those places. Uh, transformation must start from the home. And if it doesn't start from the home, uh, we may find ourselves wrestling with things that sometimes is too late in the day. Uh, to make meaningful change, or at least we'll find ourselves needing to put too much energy and effort to correct some, some things that uh, are not addressed from the home front. But the home front needs the church front. And so if transformation is only happening at, at, the, at the home front, and it doesn't, again, connect to the, uh, to the church, and uh, the church is feeding the home and the home is feeding the church, again, uh, we will have uh, problems there. And so transformation must begin from the home. The home must deeply partner and work with the church for this impact to be sustained and uh, for even the right equipping to know what to do and how to do it. Uh, to be done from the home front. Lastly is um, what happens out there? What happens out there? And so if a church is disconnected with what happens in the world, in the marketplace out there, the business place where we go to do our careers, and it is not addressing the challenges and the issues of uh, politics and all of that, uh, then, you know, uh, we can sing all we want. It's like these wrestling guys who will come and make noise and say, I am the greatest, you know, and we do all kinds of things. And then 
uh, when you you know your opponent steps into the ring you step out and you go to yell outside the ring and so we can be yelling all we want um i say that respectfully in church and uh, shouting and singing that we are more than conquerors in christ jesus but then it's not enough to sing that in church we've got to go and test is the power are we really conquerors when we go out in the marketplace uh you know where business is being done in the space where leadership is is being done from the parliaments and the senates and the, uh you know the, the seats of power that's where we test uh, what we have does it work because life is happening there and so i think transformation has got to uh, cut and 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 each of this uh uh you know tips of this triangle must be very functional um peter preaching 2000 years ago said that um the coming of the spirit of god was uh what was prophesied by prophet joel and he said this is what was spoken about as far as the last days are concerned if the last days began 2000 years ago surely we must be somewhere way past the middle point of the last days and i think uh battle lines for the last days are drawn the devil is not playing games uh we don't have eternity to be here uh this age is soon going to close the trumpet is soon going to be blown uh there are battles that must be won there is a victory that must be secured there are interests of a kingdom of god that don't have another five decades to wait uh there is work that must be done and uh that work needs strong people the kind of demons and challenges out there are not going to be challenged by weak people uh we need men and women who are mentally strong emotionally strong spiritually strong uh relationally strong socially strong every strong that can be mentioned and so it is time to gather all the strength we can gather it is time to allow ourselves to be equipped as we engage out there the bible says when we finally appear before jesus uh whatever it is that we have done here on earth will be passed through fire we will be tested if it was really worth the life the breath the protection the provisions the privileges that we have in our generation uh so i leave us with that challenge time is short let's do our best um thank you very much for having me here um it's been a pleasure and um i appreciate uh, the honor and the opportunity to be here uh thank you very much to gihon ministry the great work that they are doing uh, led of course by pastor abi and uh, it's it's a great honor and uh, for me to be here and uh, uh to this generation let's close we are the finished generation let's do it in style when we meet the Elijahs, the Jeremiahs, the Josephs, the Esthers, uh may we have some notes to exchange. Uh may we also have experiences uh to talk about. Uh African voices, uh we are going places and this voice must be heard. Must be heard in this continent. Uh we thank God for where this journey has reached and we declare that this voice will only become louder and bigger in every corner. of the nations of this great continent thank you very much and god bless you